from the Model Horse Tag School. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to work on a medieval style uh, chair side saddle. And there were different types. Uh, this is the easiest one. The pattern has both types. This is the European, it's the easiest one to create. And then there's the Spanish style, and it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so I'll show you. Um, it's got the arms and then the rail in the back. Okay, a padded seat. Usually this is all padded. This could be velvet or suede, leather or cloth. Um, and this is one of the styles. This is not very ornate. So it'd be like an everyday type side saddle. And here's some others, um, a little bit more intricate. It just looks really big. Um, and you see it pretty much the same. You've got your, this is your front, and then the back um, has, the back is like this here, okay? It doesn't extend out. So there's another type, more ornate. It looks like painted. Um, I only have black and white, and I, I've never been able to see one of these saddles. Like, you have to go to Iceland, you know, to see it. Notice the planchette. So what the woman would do, she'd sit with her legs draped this way and then rest her feet on the planchette. Okay, so instead of stirrups, it's wooden or velvet or covered, whatever, uh, for her to put her feet on. Um, here's another one, very ornate. So this is like gold plated. And then these are the, the Ds for the planchette straps to come off. As you can see, they're pretty beat up because these are kind of old. This one here says Iceland circa 1682. So that'll tell you how historical they are. Um, I'll take a look at the pattern. Now, like I said, I'm doing two different styles, the Spanish style and the and the rail or European style. So we're gonna be uh, dealing with these pieces. Um, these down here is for the Spanish style. That'll be another video. Okay, um, so we have our outer cover. That should be done in finished leather. So any kind of painting you wanna do, um, I'd recommend you get that done before you assemble. Uh, then you have suede, it could be fabric, but we're gonna use suede and then the support is aluminum, okay? Um, and then we have the same bottom pieces, which it makes this pattern really nice because these are the same. The bottom is the same for both styles. Um, you have your drape, so this should be in finished leather, anything painted. Now, if you're going to glue on details, do those after, but the painting, the embroidery, whatever you want to do to decorate this should be done before you do the assembly. It's just easier to do it when it's flat than when it's in three dimension. Now these are support pieces. I'm using a two, three ounce leather. It won't be seen, so it can be scrapped. So if you got some nasty leather that you can't use on a Western saddle because it's got flaws, this is a great place to do it. The planchette will also be covered. Okay, and there's a couple different styles. You can, if you wanted to paint it, you can go ahead and do, you know, this um, in here style. You could make it totally square. Same with these. They don't have to be rounded. I just, it looks prettier in the pattern if you round it. By the way, this tree support piece fits right in there. So if you don't want to waste that much leather, you can go ahead and put the tree support there. Now I put these lines here. It's easier to assemble if you cut this into two pieces, but I have done it as a single piece if you prefer. This is suede. You have the bottom tree cover and then the planchette cover, all right? I would say suede, but you could use fabric if you wanted to. Now I have um, the rigging. I'm gonna do the rigging and the bridle in a different, because um, it's the same, I'm gonna do that in different videos. Um, and I've got a different styles for that. Um, but you do need, um, you do need the cinch. Uh, the cinches and the cinch lining and I would do the cinches in it can be I mean there's no pictures of the cinches so I'm assuming these cinches right um, so anyways they're they're longer than usual so they kind of hide under the drape um, you're gonna need your billets so like these could just be a dark leather but you can make them you know decorated if you want um, and then these would be a dark leather so that they don't, you know, they blend in better. And then your cinch lining, it can be any suede, but you want to, you know, cover the back. Okay, so let's talk about the padding for the um, side saddles. This is for your Spanish style. 
okay, this, for the back and the sides. This is the seat padding for both types, and this is for the saddle blanket. So cut what you need for the style that you're creating. I recommend a craft felt that's flat. That's good, I need to fix that. So a craft felt or similar material. I have used um, cosmetic pads. Uh, not cotton, cotton is just a little bit too um, difficult to work with. But I have done the, um, depending on how poofy you want it and how much control you'll think you'll have over cotton, I have used that. So, but in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and use felt. Okay, we're gonna start with the chair rail pieces. Now, I used a different stick glue so the paper hasn't been sticking. I'm just going to go ahead and pull off what doesn't stick. And that's only because it's not sticking, okay? I want a good, I want a good stick. Okay. So, we're going to take our back piece and we're going to glue the aluminum to it. Okay, we're gonna go flush at the bottom and then center it as much as possible. So we flush down here at the bottom, or mostly flush, and then center it as much as possible. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the suede right on top to totally match around all the edges. Now because it's suede, I'm just gonna do a little at a time. Okay, if you get glue on suede, let it dry. Don't try and smear it now. Let it dry and then you'll be able to just scrape it off with a blade, so. Make sure I get the edges because that's what's going to really be important. Okay, so now it's going to be time to edge coat. And you can use a regular edge coat or you can use paint. Because I want to keep this all red, I'm going to go ahead and use paint to do my edge coat. In fact, this is when I would edge coat everything that needs to be edge coated, which would be your, I mean, it's not much. These pieces need an edge coat. The rest do not need edge coat, okay? Our next step is going to be the seat. Okay, so if your um, leather is thin enough, you won't need to skive. But you need five D's, probably a six millimeter. So these are tens. You can use eights down to eight. And then I want to use a six for the back. The biggest problem I have right now is I don't have any gold and they would use brass. So we're going to go ahead and um, I'll have to use silver on everything because I don't have any gold. Okay. 
Okay, and that's our rigging strap. This is back, this is front. All right, now this piece is gonna help you position your drape. So you want to make sure you need more on this side and this side. So that's the way it's gonna sit. Don't, if you do it this way, you're not gonna have enough room. So do it this way. You see that? So you got your opening there, you got your opening here, and that's for your drape. Now what we're going to do is two of these each side because we need to lift up those edges to make it a chair. Right on the edge so it's flush on this edge and flush on those sides. This last piece is going to go right over the top, um, like that, because when it curves, we're going to get a nice round, all right? So we're only really going to glue that in the middle. And this is just going to help soften the edges in the middle for the most part. There we go make more sense when it starts to do that. Okay. Now our seat piece is going to go like this. You might find it easier to glue your shelves here. kind of pull it and push it into that glue. Define that as well as you can. That's your front. And then we can fold these under you have to get this definition here first. That's more important than folding it under to find that space right there. All right, so now we're going to do this front here. And I would do these one at a time. That way your glue is nice and fresh. I'm going to put just a little bit down here at the bottom too because what I need to do is not only push this down see like that see how that is I don't actually want too much right where that drape is going to be so we're going to try to smooth that edge so it's around and then push that suede right into there so let's try this side I need to pull that so that it's round and let's see you see that so really as much as I glued it down let's try glued it down to the bottom, I also glued it to the, the base. I'm going to do that on this side too. So we'll bring it down and then we 
need to work round corners here. See how it's rounded? Don't go square. Try to round it. And go ahead and push that in so we have room for our drape. your seat. Now we can glue this on this way. This I actually have a better hold if because I'm using a chrome tanned here. So I, I want that to be flush and then this can be back a little bit. And I would put your glue just right down the middle like that. Kittens are just full of energy today. So make sure your ring is in the back, it's flush, and that you're centered everywhere else. Now if you're off a little bit, it's not critical. Um, the way this is, you're never gonna see it. It just, it's aesthetics for me. So, there we go, that's our seat. But before I pull this paper off, I have to put on those D-straps. So I'm going to go ahead and just peel this back. If you want, you can mark them with a pen. Um, if you don't glue like this, be sure to mark those. These are for your planchette. They can be longer than this. I'm making these out of the same chrome tanned. Um, and you want them to hang over like that, okay? Because on this side, that's where you're going to attach your planchette. Helpful if they both hang the same amount. Okay. Okay, for my edge coating, I picked a lipstick red, really, really red. But now you can see how it closed it for the most part. And uh, did it on these two. Now this probably could have used a black or a brown, but I went ahead and did the red. So now we need to place our rail. Okay, that's your front. Legs are coming off this way. So that means we would put this here, and then this comes around and goes here, okay? So, we're going to want to bend this at the same time we're gluing this into position. I want to get the bottom and a little bit of this side. So the extra goes in the back. I'm dealing with suede, so i got to be careful with glue. And i got suede on suede. So we need to center it. So this post is going to be centered to that mark. Should and I don't have any clamps that will hold this the correct way, so I'm just going to use my fingers. I want to push it in and down. Not 
worried about vertical right now. Just worried about making sure this whole thing fits. So I like this glue. I've got time to work with it. Now that's okay because the drape will, will um, cover that. And make sure you push it in there because you need room for your drape here. Okay. And now we're going to do this side. So same thing. You notice I'm doing it right in here because that's what's going to be up against the cushion. And dry fit it if you're not sure, okay? So if you're not sure how it fits and where the glue goes, dry fit. Dry fit it first. All right, so bring it around. And I'm going to center it right to that D or jump ring. And I need to push it in because I need room for my drape to set on there. But we also need to push this down. Okay, now we can shape it if it needs it. There you go, that's your chair. Next up is our drape. These rings go in the front. I don't have a lot left here. Push that in a little bit. So I'm gonna put the glue right along there. but only halfway because these only go halfway. I will put some right along here towards the end though, not don't get it up too high. I don't want it in the crease, I want it below that crease. And then halfway over here. you're going to go right in the crease there with your drape. Now I want to do the same thing on the other side. And if we're lucky, it'll meet right there on both sides. And we can push that in a little bit too. So, same thing with the glue along the edge, in front of the crease, and along the edge. I'm going to place it so it get your corners good. And if you did your suede right, it'll cover it perfectly. Okay, so because I am gluing um, chrome tanned suede to finished, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get it to glue because the chrome tanned finish is not going to want to stick. Alright, now I'm going to do a little bit of glue right in here.
This is why if you can do it as one piece, you can skip this step. I'm trying to glue these two edges together. If that doesn't work, I'll get a little bit of leather and put it on the underside to hold them together. But okay, and then very carefully, same thing over here. I used way too much glue part of the problem. A little glue goes a long way. When you have too much, it just takes longer to set. All right. There's your sheet. We're almost done. This blanket is a physical part of your saddle. I was going to make it separate, but it moves around. So let's take the smaller piece of the blanket. Now here I'm using a, it's a batting, I don't know, a cotton batting or a wool batting. So let's make sure we have the correct, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and do, kind of like we did to the seat. This is the type of thing you could make it out of um, a cotton or linen and you could sew it. Because that's what they did. In fact, they're breaching often. It looks like what they did is they padded it and then lined it with linen, probably linen. Or I don't think, I don't know how much cotton they had. It was an America's thing, so. Now in this case, I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. The second one, see how it's kind of like a stair. So that's what we're gonna do there. And then I'm gonna test this, make sure it's gonna cover on all sides. Should be a little bit longer on the edge there. And then we're only going to, we're gonna glue it right along the spine of the horse. That's where it would be. So we'll fold this in half. And then we'll put that in there. And then we'll flip it over. And now we're gonna glue down all the way around. tends to shift on the model. That's why we're putting it on permanently. It's not gonna be seen, but it's very important that we lift up the sides of that chair, or the front and the back of the chair, I guess. So I'm just gonna turn those into little folds like that. And we'll come back and trim it up, but let's let that, let's let that dry. All right, now our planchette and our planchette cover. Now the tricky thing is, you have to get those in through both the suede and the planchette. So I'm gonna keep this piece as a guide. And you can, I mean, I would do it this way. So if you wanna put any, um, fringe or anything on it, I would put the fringe on now um, because it'll be easier um, and you can glue it just right around the edge. Just the pattern. Okay, we're going to do that 
centered. So I got an even amount all the way around. All right. And then, just like we did on that seat, I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. And then in the corners, we kind of collect them. So I should get out my stylus and spread the glue, but I just want to glue it to the sides. When we turn it over, it looks like that. And we'll just play with the corners. Trying to get him to come off diagonally. There we go. Now we're going to take this over the top. We're going to place it to our very best ability. And then we're going to make these slits. And of course you don't have to use the guide and you can just come back later. There you go. Okay, so for the planchette, for the length of your leather lace, I'm using a 1 16th. It has to go, it should drop here. So this keeps the woman's dress from getting dirty from the horse. And you probably want at least two and a half of that length. You can go more. So on this particular size, and I'm all go three. I'd rather cut off excess than, because if you want to reduce it, that's going to change. So you need to know what the measurement is, right? If you wanted to make this on a smaller scale, all right, so this is five and a quarter inches is what I cut. So five inches would probably be fine. And you need two of them. I'm going to use round instead of square on this. Okay, now we need to open the holes. You want your buckle facing upward. Okay. Here comes trouble.
He's over here like he owns everything I own. No, you can't run away with that. Sorry, he's such a wonderful distraction. has run off with all of my traps. <laughs> oh. He's fun. He likes to come up on my desk and play with whatever I'm playing with. Now they're all here. So to adjust this, pull this down, pull that up, pull this down, pull that up, that is how it should lay. Of course I'll pretty up those buckles and I didn't see keepers. Oddly enough, I would probably just glue those down. Um, get your buckles even. Right, my buckles are not even here. So I would just glue that down if it's going to misbehave. Just the tip. Something where it's easy to bust that bond if I need to. I don't want to do much. You could use tea, uh, sticky wax too, but this will work. That's what that looks like. And now we have this piece. <clears throat> so I'm going to trim that just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm going to take these off. They're unnecessary. So there we go. That would be go ahead and just align straight down the middle and just so it's pretty I'm gonna put it on that way okay the pattern already shows holes or not to skive. Now we don't want these too long and they are a little bit long. So we really don't want them that long. Okay. 
Now we should be ready to put this on a horse. There you go. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. It's probably one of the easier patterns I've ever created. Um, all right, thanks for stopping by today. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. Have yourself a really good day.